Since Lord Cat started doing UW Dub in August of 2009, I was forced to watch in agony as he played through two of my favorite hard games, Zelda 2 and Bionic Commando, without doing them enough justice. When I called him out on it, he told me to go f myself. Although I think that was mostly because I linked him to a thesaurus entry on the word difficult. But that's in the past, and I think we've gotten over our differences. So now that UW Dub is going open source, I'm going to take the time to cover a game that he always said he would do, but never did. So today we're playing Mylon's Secret Castle. Until we win. Now first of all, most of you are likely familiar with the angry video game nerd and his review of Mylon's Secret Castle. More like Mylon sh the ass I fucking hate this game. Fuck this game! He didn't like it. Those of you who follow me on YouTube are probably familiar with my own rebuttal in episode 4, Video Game Bunker. How can you praise one free roaming game like Legend of Zelda and then denigrate another one like Mylon's Secret Castle, you f***ing hypocrite? Needless to say, the episode received a lot of flack from the community at large and remains my most viewed and commented video on ScrewAttack.com, mostly from people saying I'm wrong. Regardless of how you feel about how I feel, Mylon's Secret Castle is regarded by most retro gamers as one of the hardest games on the NES, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's not an easy game. Two main issues most mention are the fact that Mylon has no hit stun, and the secrets you're required to find in order to progress can sometimes be downright cryptic. Well, this video will help you with the latter, as for the former, well, you're just gonna have to worry about that yourself. That said, there are a lot of things that can be done to make it easier for you to survive. First off, learn how Mylon moves. You must have momentum in order to get any distance when you jump. If you just do a standing jump, you'll get maybe a quarter of the distance you would if you had a running start. Also, be sure to pay attention to where enemies and their bullets are. If you're caught off guard, it's possible to have half your health drained in less than a second. You may think this means you should always be firing in case some small demon appears before you have a chance to react, but keep in mind that you can only have a single bubble on screen until you find an umbrella, which I'll explain when I'll get into the power-ups. Each of the seven main rooms in the castle follow a formula. Find a key, and then find the door. The key will appear once you've taken enough actions in a room, whether finding money, killing enemies, or uncovering blocks. If you enter a store or a sub area within the room, the blocks and key will be reset, so when you hear the chime, make sure you grab the key before you move on, otherwise you'll have to start all over again searching for it. Power-ups Honeycombs are always found in the same location every time you play. Finding one will refill all of your health and give you an extra hit point. There are 9 hidden throughout the game which can raise your health to a maximum of 16. Needless to say, you'll want to try to track down every one of these if you wish to stand a chance. Crystal balls are dropped by each of the seven demon monsters in the castle. Obtaining these have the immediate effect of increasing the range of your bubble attacks as well as triggering event flags which are required to complete the game. Hearts do exactly what you expect them to do. They restore one hit point of health and are dropped by enemies randomly. The Hudson B is also hidden somewhere in almost every room in the castle. It's always revealed by shooting the same block, and catching it will give you an energy shield. This can generally take between 2 and 5 hits before it goes away, depending on the amount of damage you take, and is invaluable for boss battles, especially the final one. Whenever you find one, make sure to immediately take the time to grind for hearts, which will strengthen it and allow it to absorb more damage. Whenever you uncover one, it will not respawn, even if you don't catch it, so if you remember where some are, you may want to save them for later levels. Umbrellas can also be dropped randomly by enemies and rise slowly. Each one you catch will allow you to have one more bubble on screen at a time, up to a limit of three. These are incredibly useful in later levels when your bubbles have so much range that missing with one will leave you exposed and vulnerable for quite a while while you wait for it to disappear. Finally, we have music boxes, which take you to a bonus stage. Here, Mylon must capture musical notes. Standard 1 8 notes are worth one point and sharps are worth two. Flats reduce the total by one, so naturally you'll want to avoid these. At the end, you will be awarded money based on the number of notes you've found, at an exchange rate of 4 to 1. However, if you manage to collect more than 50 notes, the exchange rate doubles to 2 to 1, which means the prize goes from 10, 11, 12, and then immediately jumps to 25. Now with power-ups out of the way, let's get into the main game. I'm not going to hold your hand here, it'll be up to you to take the time to explore and find money as well as grinding for hearts. I'll tell you where a few specific caches are, but you'll be on your own when it comes to keeping your health high and your wallet filled. Also, Mylon's Secret Castle is a game of exploration and discovery, so I feel if I explain everything to you, it'll remove a lot of the fun of the game. If you wish to discover the game for yourself, you may want to stop the video now and begin playing on your own. If you get stuck, however, here's how to get through the game. First Floor Immediately enter the first door and start exploring the first room of the castle. Once you have at least $16, go to the bottom right area, shoot the blocks on each side of the series of blocks, and push the center block for 3 seconds to move it. Then shoot the empty space to get the store to appear. 
Here you can purchase the jumping shoes. The jumping shoes allow Mylon to use springs that are embedded in specific tiles and are pretty much essential to reaching certain areas within the levels. You can buy them for cheaper in a later store, but it's much easier to reach them here. The honeycomb of this room is hidden against the left wall, the Hudson Bee is hidden here, and the music box is hidden here. Room 2. If you have at least $5, and you should if you did well enough in the bonus stage, you can buy the shrinking potion here. This is the cheapest and most essential item in the game, and you will need to buy it before you can move on. The shrinking potion will allow Mylon to shrink after touching the glove. Yes, you heard that correctly. By using a magic potion, Mylon will shrink instead of getting hurt by a boxing glove. This is a very weird game. Shrinking is generally beneficial because it makes it easier to get around and makes you a smaller target. Once you have both the shrink potion and the jumping shoes, you can enter the window to take on the first demon monster. But I suggest you go to the fourth room first in order to find more money and another honeycomb and energy shield if you need it. In the fourth room, you will encounter these brown faced buggers, and I just want to say, I hate these little guys. Enemies normally respawn in a specific location, but these guys will respawn in the exact place you killed them, so they will always be right on your ass if you're trying to concentrate on a difficult jump. Show them no mercy and kill them as soon as they appear. The fourth room honestly has nothing essential in it beyond the honeycomb, music box, Hudson B, and a crap load of money. If you shoot the wall in the top right corner, you can discover this shop which sells a lamp for $50. Do not, I repeat, do not buy the lamp here. It's just a waste of money since you can buy it later for only $15. Now, the first demon monster. If you're new to the game, he will likely be a challenge, but you better get used to it because they only get harder from here. Just make sure you have your energy shield at full power and you have both umbrellas so you can fire as rapidly as possible. The trick to beating the first two demon monsters, believe it or not, is to get in close. Keep jumping and aim for the face. Once he shoots, jump up underneath the fireball, shoot him, and drop down out of the way before he shoots another one. Alternatively, you can attempt to use hit and run tactics, staying to the left, avoiding his fireballs, and getting one or two shots in before retreating. Always be sure to shoot him in the face, because body shots do no damage and just pass right through him. If you keep practicing, you should be able to defeat him without even losing your energy shield. The first demon monster takes 14 hits to defeat, and each time the fireball hits you, you will lose one hit point. There are two rooms on the second floor, an orange room and a green room, and there's also a well on the far right that you need to bring some special equipment for. You can find the lamp in the green room for only $15, although personally I still find it a waste of money. The lamp is only required to see in the bottom of the well, but when you've been playing the game for as long as I have, you have the map memorized. The honeycomb can be found here, the Hudson Bee here, and the music box here. In the orange room, if you shoot through the bottom right wall, you'll be able to find a fireproof vest for $25. Unlike the lamp, this is highly important as it will prevent you from taking damage in the fire room of the well. Without it, it's almost impossible to survive. Another location of interest is a store in the upper left corner of the room that will actually give you free money. How this guy manages to stay in business, I have no idea. Make sure you stop by here before you leave the room. The honeycomb is here, the bee is here, and the music box is here. Once you have the fire vest, you're ready to enter the well. For comparison's sake, here's what the well looks like without the lamp, and here's what it looks like with it. The observant of you will notice two blocks that are highlighted without the lamp. These are the two that you have to shoot to progress. Hit the glove to gain some mobility, and keep firing at the left wall until you find the opening. There's a honeycomb in this room, just to the right of the trap door here, as well as some money. Get what you can, but don't dawdle, because the octopuses is gonna not be killed. Finally, you reach the fire room. Take time to grind for hearts here if you're desperately low, but if you don't have an energy shield, don't worry about maxing out. When running through the fire, be sure to keep moving. Even if Mylon appears to wince, he isn't actually taking any damage. If you need a shield, you can find a bee here and grind for hearts against this monster. If the octopus starts to drift over, however, it's time to make an exit. Don't try to kill Fry Guy either, since he's invincible at this point as well. Instead, shoot the column on the right to reveal a trap door, but be sure to grab the honeycomb before you drop down. Defeating the second demon monster is similar to defeating the first. This one has 17 hit points and each hit will deal 1 damage to you. And no, I'm not going to make a joke about what he looks like. My brother always said he looked like his favorite fuzzy brown blanket. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Killing the boss will score you the hammer and strengthen up your bubbles enough to finally kill those annoying octopuses. Once you do so, it will leave behind a balloon. Grab it and it will take you out of the well. Once you have the hammer, drop back down to the first floor of the castle and enter this wall, which will let you get the saw. 
And this is something that's always bugged me about the item progression in this game. The saw is used to open windows, and the hammer is used to open walls. But you get them, essentially, right after each other. That would be like if in Doom you get the blue and yellow keycards in the same room. Wouldn't it be more efficient to just have one item to open both windows and walls? Oh well. Once you have the saw, go back to the first room and grind yourself to maximum hearts and umbrellas. Before going through the rightmost window, if there are any energy shields you haven't gotten yet, I suggest you find one, because the third boss will deal two units of damage every time it hits you. And trust me, you're gonna need every last bit of energy to survive. This is also probably the last boss against which I can suggest the up close and personal approach, because this is where it really starts getting dangerous. From this point on, you won't be hanging back and taking pot shots from afar. Make avoiding damage your first priority and dealing damage your second. With him defeated, we get to the third floor of the castle, and this is where the bulk of the game takes place. The third floor consists of three main rooms, two towers, and a hidden dungeon with two parts. The first thing you'll want to do is enter the top leftmost window in order to access the hidden money room in the first floor of the castle. The money will respawn twice more afterward, which should give you enough to buy the super jump shoes. These do exactly what you think they do. They let you jump higher. Your next stop is the fireplace room. The money in the top half of the room will repeatedly respawn, so if you find yourself short on cash, you can come back here anytime to stock up. There's a store here that you can access by pushing on this block. Inside, you'll be able to buy the balloon for $40. The balloon will let you hover down slowly as long as the jump button is being held down, and is invaluable for getting past some of the tricky platforming sections. You'll want to avoid the bottom half for now, since you'll be coming back here with business later. The bee is here, and the music box is here. This is the only main room in the castle that doesn't have a honeycomb in it. The purple room is one of the more annoying rooms in the game, but thankfully, since you bought the super jump shoes and the balloon, you should be able to get around here much easier. Work your way to the top right corner and shoot a hole in the ceiling. Here you can buy the feather for $35. Technically, this is an optional item because it only does one thing, lets you ride the elevator in the column room. But since it's almost impossible to reach the door without it, you may want to get it here. The honeycomb can be found here, the bee is here, and the music box is here. In the column room, you're going to have to shoot holes in the walls in order to get anywhere. Make your way to the center of the room, and if you bought the feather, ride the elevator up and buy the sword. This will drastically improve your attack power and make the upcoming bosses a lot easier. If you didn't buy the feather, you're going to have to work your way up the hard way, shooting whatever blocks you can and hopefully making it through the door at the top. The music box can be found here, the bee here, and the honeycomb is all the way over here. Before taking on the tower, stop by this store here and buy the visibility potion. Not the invisibility potion, the visibility potion. This lets invisible blocks appear when you shoot them. If you don't have it, shooting them will still cause the blocks to become solid, you just won't be able to see them. When you're ready, make your way to the top of the rightmost tower and enter through the wall. Ride the melting ice by standing on both blocks and be sure to grab the honeycomb on the way down. This is the last honeycomb in the game, so by now you should have your HP maxed out at 16. Be especially careful in the electricity room, since the lightning here can annihilate your health in only a few seconds. If you need a shield, there's a Hudson Bee hidden here, but your odds of catching it are pretty slim. Try it at your own risk. If you feel like you have to grind for hearts, do so against this monster, not the one below, since the lightning can spawn underneath you and ruin all your hard work. Once you feel like you have enough, head to the right and take on the fourth demon monster. And this is where most people get stuck, not because they don't know what to do, but because the boss here is pretty freaking hard. He's not so bad by himself, but after going through the ice tower and the lightning room, your health will already be low. Combine that with the fact that the demon monster has 26 hit points and deals 3 damage to you every time it hits you, and you're going to be facing one of the hardest challenges the game has to offer. So yeah, you're going to die. A lot. But when you finally manage to defeat him, you'll be awarded with the holy water, and this is a key component that you need to finish the rest of the game. Next, you need to get the crown and scepter back from Maharito's minions. These can be done in either order. For the first piece, return to the fireplace room and use your new holy water bubbles to kill the fire demon. Once he's dead, shoot the blocks on top of the fireplace and push the center one to open the trap door. Inside, you will find the fifth demon monster, who isn't as tough as the fourth. I suppose if you want to be pedantic, you could argue that this is actually the fourth demon monster because he's easier. But you can fight him in any order anyway, and you're already at maximum power, so it's not like it makes much of a difference. Once he's dead, you can move on to the dungeon. Shoot around to make the blocks appear and use them to reach the princess against the left wall. Drop through the trap door and hold left so you land on the platform instead of falling through again. Touch the princess and hurry out of the chamber as the minion reveals herself. 
Shoot her through the wall with your bubbles and avoid her shots to claim the scepter when she's dead. To claim the crown, climb the left tower and enter through the wall. In this area, you will find yourself climbing downstairs that never end. The only way to escape is to shoot these blocks in the top right corner as soon as the opportunity presents itself, then carefully jump through the opening. You'll reach a set of stairs that were previously inaccessible and be able to reach the bottom of the tower. Take out the sixth demon monster and continue into the final dungeon. Make your way to the second fake princess and take her out just like you did before. Once you have both the scepter and crown, it's time for the home stretch. Make sure you have all your weapons and an energy shield if there are any left, because the final demon monster is coming up. I'll be honest with you, as a kid, this guy scared the shit out of me. The seventh demon monster is a skeletal dragon who bounces around like crazy and spews fireballs faster than anything you've fought before. Seriously, compare this guy to the first demon monster and you'll wonder if he was on Valium or something. I said it before, but it bears repeating. Your best bet is to use hit and run tactics. After collecting all six crystal balls, you should have enough range to keep your distance. The skeletal demon monster has 32 hit points and each fireball that hits you will take off three and a half blocks of health. Finally, the top of the castle, the fourth floor. Enter the remaining window. There are four rooms here and they're all laid out exactly the same except for minor variations like trapdoors or the glove. Maharito or one of his clones can be found at the very top of each of these rooms and the real one will be different every time you play the game. Your only choice is to try each one. If it turns into a bird minion, don't bother fighting it, it's a fake. Just escape and try the next room over. When taking on Maharito, you can only hurt him when he opens up his cloak to attack you. If your health is high enough, go all out when he does this. Get in close and fire as fast as possible, even if you have to take a hit. If you were able to defeat the skeletal demon, he should be no trouble to you. And that's Violent Seeker Castle. Yeah, a few of the puzzles are pretty cryptic, but I think it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're looking for a challenge. I'd like to thank Lord Cat for creating Until We Win and giving me a chance of doing an episode myself. Make sure you follow Dragon Slayer Productions on Facebook, and check out some of the other shows on my blog as well. Heck, I may do another one of these. Who knows? Until then, this is Doug, aka Test Zero, and happy gaming, everyone.